morning, Dad. Hey, going for a run? Yeah, you should join me like you used to. Not with my old knees and back. Mm -mm. Try Xanthacin. It could really help. Plus, it's super safe, Dad, and it's good for your heart and brain. Xanthacin fights aging with astaxanthin, nature's most powerful antioxidant. And with three times the absorption and superior purity, it's the brand physicians trust. Find it at GetXantho.com and these retailers. Keep doing what you love with Xanthacin. How's it going, everybody? Episode 27 of Hawaii Football now presented by Xanthison. Mahalo also to our sponsors, Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. Jordan Helly, Hunter Hughes, back with you here for another edition of HFN. We record this Wednesday morning just after 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, about a day before it is scheduled to be released on March 3rd. We're already into March. This is absolutely insane uh, as the offseason just motors on. Uh, and a guy who is hard at work, Jacob Yoro, the defensive coordinator under the new regime here in Manoa, will join us. He is the first official guest of the pod. Uh, it only took us 27 episodes to get a guest on, but uh, shout out to our guy, Jaron, uh, our producer for uh, securing the interview. And uh, shout out to Coach Yoro for uh, you know joining us at 7 o'clock in the morning. And we will get to that in the second half of this year episode 27 but hunter uh, a guy that you played for in coach yoro i know uh, uh pretty exciting stuff he is a hawaii guy through and through from milani went to st louis went and played at montana has coached at a number of different stops d3 one double a now in you know the fbs level has been at hawaii about as long as anybody has on this current staff he has been through three different head coaches now uh, and a guy who's very much ingrained, has a lot of institutional knowledge, a guy that you know, Hunter, mm -hmm. from your playing days. Uh, and I think after listening to the interview, I think a lot of folks will be pretty excited about his new role, his elevated role in the direction. Of oh, absolutely. Program. And, you know, one thing with Coach Yoro is, you know, he uh, um, has great relationship with his players and, is, and because of that is able to um, cultivate a higher level of um of commitment from the guys and uh uh you know just listening to his vision on uh what type of a defense they're going to be what type of a team they're going to be from the terms of uh of playing together um playing as a unit and playing hard and physical football i mean it, it got me excited jordan thinking back to uh some of the old uh days of hawaii football when uh guys like bang out there and uh it's uh hawaii football through and through man it got me excited score some points and put that's people right. on their okoles right that's uh that's that's the brand of football that i think a lot of people would come out to see um all right so again that is coming up in the second half of our podcast first half won't be very long that's the main event we know that um but uh, some quick opening drive time uh, i mentioned it last week hunter i uh, went to tumua his show at the mac maui arts and cultural center on saturday he was great i had a very very uh fun evening it was super entertaining and uh he's he's awesome man and i i i'm excited for his career and and this is the start of his tour right uh, as he heads to the mainland as well he's doing multiple shows around the state of hawaii before he heads to the continent um i know he's a guy that you're close with uh tell him tell him uh, the maui crowd and i i know he felt it because the crowd was terrific uh he was awesome I, yeah no I'll, I'll definitely uh i'll shoot him a text today um i was curious because you know i i've been on this journey with him for a while for those at home listening uh to move to an ae uh former university of hawaii safety um son of uh uh and of the whole two and a family um obviously that's uh hawaii football lineage right there through and through but uh now he's in the stand-up comedy uh scene and killing it uh one of the things I've noticed with his style is he's big on uh, crowd work and uh, and picking people out in the crowd and just riffing off people. Did, did he do some of the similar he, stuff? Jordan? He did do some of the similar stuff. Yeah, he had a few folks uh, sort of in the front row area. Oh yeah, that uh, drew a few laughs. That was uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and and I just love it, man. He's 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 not uh, you know it's not it's pretty family friendly. Yeah, like it's, it's very observational funny. it's very local uh and uh i think a lot of folks would would enjoy it and uh yeah so uh well, well he's busy for a while but uh we'll have to get him on the pod one day 
Oh uh, man, and, uh, I don't know if we can do that. He's gonna roast me, man. The perfect, even more so. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's that'll be the whole episode. It'll be uh, Tumua roasting Hunter. That'll yeah. be a, a special coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes now. But Tumua was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how the tour plays out. I'm sure it'll be wildly successful. He's already sold out a bunch of shows, uh, both locally and, and on the mainland. So uh, wish him the best. Uh, thoroughly entertained. It was a lot of fun uh, this past Saturday. All right, game time. First half, real quick, uh, we just kind of wanted to get this out there because it has been released and it is on the near horizon. Uh, so no sense we wait till next week, but the, the UH spring football schedule has been released uh, and everything is open to the public. And that is another main reason we wanted to get the word out there if you haven't already been privy to the news. Spring ball beginning March 22nd. Uh, the spring game will be held April 16th. That'll be 6 p.m. at Ching, but it is sort of an all-day festivity. They're dubbing it Island Day. Um, and per uh, Coach Timmy Chang, Christian Mabuku of KHON, uh, had some coverage on it as well. It'll be an all-day experience with UH fans, um, including entertainment, play areas for kids, a beer garden. Uh, that was in the quote, so that's no secret there. Uh, among other amenities, it's going to be like a, a, a party atmosphere down there on lower campus, culminating with the spring game at 6 o'clock um, at Ching, they, again, they get 15 permitted practices, March 22nd, 24th, 26th, 29th, 31st, uh, and then April 2nd, which will be a scrimmage. The 5th, 7th are practices. The 9th will be another scrimmage. And then you got the 12th, the 14th, 16th is the Saturday. That's the spring game and the Island Day festivities. And then they wrap it up with three practices on the 19th, the 21st, and the 23rd. Coach Chang tweeted out, practices are all caps, open to the public. Would love to get would also love to get this place rocking on April 16th. My vision is a mock game day, a real fan experience, entertainment, cakey zones, food, beer garden. We go in all out with multiple exclamation points in the tweet. Stay tuned for more details. Lots of exciting plans in the works with a fire emoji to punctuate that tweet. Uh, he was fired up. I think a lot of fans are as well. And, and to be fair, it, a lot of the COVID restrictions are easing up, if not being eliminated. And so that allows for some of these type of atmospheres, which really haven't been for the last, you know, two and a half years almost now. Um, but for those looking to check out the program, you got some opportunities coming up. Oh, totally. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's tough to, you know, blame uh, this last coaching regime for absolutely everything. Um, that is uh, Hawaii football from the day in, day out feeling of uh, being a University of Hawaii a fan. You know, that sort of fan experience wasn't that great the last couple of years. A lot of that, I do believe, had to, had to fall on COVID shoulders. Um, I don't want to put all of that on um, Coach Todd Graham, but, you know, you, you see the effort right now with this new regime with Coach Timmy Chang. And again, this is just my, my, uh, my past, but um, it feels so similar to when Rolo came in after the Norm Chow era, kind of going from this stale, um, robotic, and um, rigid um, fan experience to one that's dynamic, one that is uh, an ohana that they're, they're welcoming people back to be a part of. And definitely, you know, I'll speak for the alumni. I'm super excited to get down there and see spring practice and see what sort of a team we're able to put on the field again. Because, um, yeah, we're, we're going to have a brand new team come this fall. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of excitement, but there's a lot of uncertainty, right, that, that, that goes along with it. That, that, that is fair to say. And I think some of that changeover, some of the realities are reflected in our conversation with Coach Yoro. Uh, coming up here in just a second, we'll take a quick little halftime break. We will get you back for part two and our interview with the defensive coordinator of the University of Hawaii football team, Jacob Yoro. But before we get there, you may have heard about this amazing supplement called Astaxanthin. Doctors and pharmacists recommended for everything from joint and muscle function to cholesterol health and cognitive function as well, even anti-aging. But did you know only one brand delivers three times more Astaxanthin to your body, making it a better buy? Then the competition. Introducing Xanthacin, available at GetXantho.com, Newtown Square Pharmacy, Down to Earth Kaka'ako, GNC Stores, and Pharmacare Hawaii. Again, learn more at GetXantho.com. That's GetZantho.com. This is Hawaii Football Now from ESPN Honolulu. It's 
All right, here we are with University of Hawaii defensive coordinator Jacob Yoro, who is officially our first guest ever in the history of this podcast. We're like 27 episodes in, so we needed to get a little warmed up, uh, Coach, before Hunter and I could, uh, you know, welcome in uh, a third party to the proceedings. But uh, first of all, thanks for for taking some time out. It's Wednesday morning. It's 7 o'clock. I know you guys are used to getting to work uh, this early. You're in the coaching room. You're on the practice field and whatnot. But uh, we do appreciate you taking some time out. Uh, early in the morning on Wednesday. Uh, how are things going, man? It has been a whirlwind last three months, to say the least. I think everybody, you know, who tunes into the podcast, very familiar with, you know, what's gone on and coaching changes and changing of positions and whatnot. And and here we are now, you know, just a couple of weeks away from spring ball. But, but how are things going for you uh, in this new role? Um, it has been a whirlwind, um, you know, like you said, the last couple of months, I mean, just a bunch of ups and downs, um, but it's been exciting. Um, you know, Coach Chang has brought in obviously a, a different energy um, and an excitement to the community. Um, and so, um, you know, for us right now, it, it's kind of, we're wearing multiple hats. Um, we are building a defense, getting ready for spring ball. Um, we're training our players and being around them and the new coaches are developing the relationships with them. Um, we're spending time in the community um, you know, we had an event last night. We had an event on Sunday. We're going to have an event again Friday night um, and, and kind of just being out in the community, seeing the community leaders, um, the, the supporters and things of that nature. Um, and then also we have our recruiting portion and the class of 2022 is still being recruited um, as we are starting to kind of get into the class of 2023 going into spring recruiting. And so um, there's a lot of things that need to get done and there's a lot of work ahead of us. Um, but it has been exciting. Um, it's been fun to get together and, and put in the work with these guys. And, um, and the kids are really working their tails off right now. You can, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the whistles are, blo whistles are blowing outside and the guys are at work. Yeah, that's, that's the, the fun sounds in the morning there on lower campus, man. You hear some whistles, you, see, you hear some hooting and hollering. Uh, I was kind of curious about that, Coach. You mentioned the excitement um, very much. It, it seems like there is a concerted effort to get out in the community create a, a connection between the program, the coaching staffs, the players, uh, and, and those fans that are out there that, that, that support this program. It seems like from our perspective, at least, or, or my perspective, I will not speak for Hunter here, but from the outside looking in, there seems to be a renewed energy. And some of that, you know, kind of naturally comes with a new coaching staff, a new head coach. Uh, but there does seem to be a lot of positive momentum being built a lot of excitement sort of surrounding this program. Is, is that something that can be felt from within as well? Is that something that, you know, the, the guys can feel, the coaching staff can feel, um, you know, that it seems like from the outside in that it is there? Absolutely. I mean, if you really go out there right now and you watch our guys, um, they're excited to be putting in work, um, which is, is always exciting for us as coaches to watch these guys, the smile on their faces, when they're showing up at five o'clock in the morning to work out, um, you know, I think really says a lot. And so um, in the building here, um, even throughout lower campus, um, I think that that positive energy and that excitement is, is being felt. And, and so I know it's, it's, it's in the locker room, it's, it's on the turf, uh, it's in the meeting rooms um, and it's all in those places right now. And so, and, and that's what happens. Like you said, it, it's, it's the honeymoon phase still. Guys are excited about some of the new things that are happening especially after some of the things that we went through over the last six months. Um, but at the end of the day, I keep telling our guys that um, it's not all about sunshines and rainbows, man. It, it's about putting in that work. It's about straining. It's about doing those things that are going to help us become a championship defense and a championship program. And that's really where that's built, but we can have fun while we do those things. Coach, uh, for, first of all, just uh, to make it official on the podcast, wanted to send my congratulations again on getting the DC role. Um, couldn't be happier for you, man. Um, in light of everything that's gone out, uh, gone down in the last uh, you know couple of months with the transfer portal um, specifically, um, so much uh, in creating a winning formula on the field has to do with creating. Uh, solid leadership and a great team environment. Are you starting to see guys starting to rise up into those leadership roles on the team right now? We are. And, um, you know, I think we as coaches sometimes forget that in order for leadership to emerge, we need to step back and let it emerge. Um, I think sometimes we coaches are so, we want to put so much of our emphasis 
um, onto them and our philosophies onto them, which is important. We got to be able to let them know what the vision is and what the parameters are of our program. But then you need to be able to sit back and let the leaders emerge. If we're out there every single minute telling them what to do, exactly how to do things, policing everything that's done, then they never create ownership in it. And so we've kind of allowed these things to happen to see who are the natural leaders on our team and who is respected. And those guys have started to stand up um, and have started to kind of, you know, be in the forefront of things in regards to how we go about business each and every day. And it's exciting to see. Man, that's awesome. Uh, I'm excited to get down and uh, just see, you know, Coach uh, Timmy Chang said that uh, spring practice is going to be open to the public again. And I think a lot of that also just has to do with things being opening up again with the uh, um, with COVID protocols. But, um, you know, in terms of recruiting coach, you know, we are in a new frontier right now with the transfer portal. Um, is that providing new challenges, new opportunities for you guys? Um, uh, is that something that is very much on your radar as, you know, something that could add to our roster at the end of this recruiting season? Um, you know, you're absolutely right, Hunter. The, the transfer portal has absolutely changed the face of recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we need to be able to adapt in order to, to survive it. Um, and so you, you brought up, you know, challenges and opportunities. It presented both for us and it always will. We will have guys that we quote unquote develop here um, that will be possibly hitting the portal, you know, down at a later date. That's kind of what the dynamic is. And those presents challenges for us. Um, but with that being said, there's opportunity to fill those voids with, with, with other players as well coming through from the portal to us. And so mm -hmm. the nice thing about it here is, is Hawaii is a recruiting hotbed. We have so many good high school players that come out of this state um, and them coming home, guys that you know have gone on elsewhere, that's always gonna pr provide opportunity for us to get some of those guys back. And so that's what we're in the process of right now is you know, we have some immediate needs right now in the recruiting cycle. Um, you know, a lot of starters and a lot of experience left um, you know, in the transfer portal. And so we need to be able to fill that with guys that that are ready to play now. And so this will probably be our most, I would, I would assume and, and be able to venture to say that we will probably do our most portal recruiting this year um, to be able to fulfill or to fill some of those needs. Um, and then from there, we'll be able to kind of get a little bit more traditional coming back to some of the, the high school recruiting and things of that nature. But the landscape, it's definitely changed and the portal is the one that's changed it. And, and with that, Coach, <clears throat> it seems like it has lengthened the recruiting period, for, for lack of a better term, but it sort of seems like it's lengthened the process where, hey, you know, before it was like everybody on signing day, that's your class, you move forward, and, and maybe some guys trickle in or whatnot. But it, it really seems like there are, you know, tangible prospects, guys that, that you expect to contribute that are, that are very much still in the mix, um, you know, throughout the spring, even into the summer. Is that the case? Absolutely. Um, you know, in March, we're going to have two official visit weekends. We're starting one this weekend. Um, I think we're bringing in about five guys, I think, this weekend. And then April, we'll do two as well. Um, it's, a, it's a quiet period, so we're allowed to bring recruits onto campus for official visits. We just can't be out um, off campus recruiting right now. And so what traditionally happened in January and ended in February, we're doing in March and April. And then wow. it'll, continue, um, it'll continue into the summer. And so, wow. yes, it has lengthened the period. Um, especially for us where we have initial scholarships left. You know, some of the programs across the country have already filled all of their initial scholarship um, spots. And so they're not doing the same thing as we are right now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to, to find some talent that's available right now. And, and we're one of the few colleges in America that has a lot of scholarships left to be able to bring them in with. And just to clarify, these are guys that could potentially be on the roster in the, this fall, right? Fall of 2022. Correct. These are the guys that will join us in, um, they'll join us in June, um, train with us throughout the summer and we'll be, you know, we'll be suited up, ready to go come, you know, come August. For those listening at home to add a little bit of context here, uh, not only are they bringing in new guys, but they are essentially creating a brand new, you know, team concept right now as well in, in the middle of spring ball. Um, you guys definitely have your, um, your, your work cut out for you, coach. Um, I, I tip my cap, you know, to you guys. Um, what has your approach been any different 
uh, obviously you never been a, uh, in a defensive coordinator at uh, university of Hawaii before. Um, is your approach any different on a day-to-day -day, um, perspective in uh, going about your business? Um, yes. Um, you know, taking on the coordinator role, um, now it's about managing staff. It's about managing mm -hmm. an entire unit. Um, and then add on to the, the recruitment or late recruitment going into this portal deal. It just, you know, we're wearing a lot of hats right now and yeah. being able to kind of organize those things um, and being able to sit down and, and talk about those things on a daily basis and make sure we're taking care of it. And so, you know, for me, like a little insight, when I meet with my staff every morning, all right, there's three things that we go over every single day. The very first thing is player management. All right. And so talking about player management in regards to who's having academic issues, um, you know, who was late to a meeting, whatever it may be, or, or, or so-and-so has got to go home for something, just being able to talk through some of the things in regards to player management and, and being able to keep organized on that and keeping tabs on those guys. Um, and then the second thing is recruiting is us touching about on our recruiting board every single day of, you know, what conversations were had the day, night before, what's the plan going into the weekend with the guys showing up. Um, you know, those things. Um, and then it's the football piece. Um, you know, what, what film do we need to watch? What things do we need to iron out? You know, what empty checks do we need to go over? What unbalanced checks? What is the next, you know, piece of install? Um, and, and those things, practice plans or whatever it is going into spring ball. And so those three things right now are consuming our day. Um, you know, and then the, the evenings are, are consumed with, with either continuing those things and especially the recruitment portion of it, or us being out in the community, uh, meeting with community leaders, meeting with supporters, meeting with boosters, things of that nature to make sure that, that we're out and about and, and they're hearing what, what our vision is for this program. And, and, and coach, with all of your experience now, having gone through, you know, learning under multiple staffs, multiple head coaches throughout your, you know, your, your coaching career now, which is, uh, you know, pretty lengthy um as you work into what i guess your second decade third decade now is as a coach high school working your way all the way up through just about every level of college football and now you're here fbs coordinator you know what do you envision your defense looking like what do you envision this defense looking like on the field schematically you know sort of mindset wise what, what what's going to go into a, a you know a jacob euro coordinated defense you know that question has been asked a lot of me, obviously, over the last couple of weeks. And the, the thing that I've consistently said, because I, I, I believe it, it's more important than scheme, right? The most important thing that we need to develop as a unit is our mentality. And you spoke about that a little bit, right? And, you know, I've seen coaches put out these huge mission statements and this and that. And, and, and yeah. I sit there and I kind of think these are things that are great for for um, clinic talk, um, but doesn't actually touch the feet of our players. And so, so for me, we talk about three things, and these are the three pillars of, of what we're going to do defensively, is we're going to play hard, we're going to play tough, and we're going to play together. And those three things, I believe, you know, we can, we can evaluate those things on a daily basis to see if we're matching what we're speaking of, right, whether it's in the, on the practice field, whether it's in the meetings, whether it's in the classroom, all of those things. And it's about playing hard, playing tough and playing together. And, and the reason why I, I've talked about these three things is I truly believe that the University of Hawaii's football program should represent the people that are in it. And, and when, when I think about these things and, and as, as Coach Chang has, has talked about his vision of what we wanna do on this program. Um, and I, I started to think about how we wanted to develop that in our unit. I think about the people that, that are from these islands right? And those people, I think, exemplify those characteristics that I spoke about. Their work ethic, right? So many people have come, um, you know, I'm one of them, where I come from immigrant families, that the first people that came over worked two to three jobs just to try to make it in this place, right? Make it in this place. And work ethic, I don't think is something um, that is new to the people of Hawaii. The people of Hawaii know how to work. And so for us, effort would never be questioned. The way we run after the football, the way we get after the football, the way we train, the way we do all of those things, those things should never be questioned when you look at our unit. All right. The second thing is look at all the cultures that are here in Hawaii and the cultures that are represented, right? The individual ethnicities and cultures. And, and those people are tough. Um, it's a warrior mentality through all of those things. I mean, growing in, a, in Hawaii, 
Um, you need to be tough. It, it happens. It's a physical culture. It's things that you need to be able to grow up and do those things. And, and we want that to be exemplified in the way we play. Because I think the people of Hawaii, they love 70 points being put on the board. Um, but they also love seeing guys getting smacked and getting guys put on their ass and doing those things. And so, um, you know, the toughness, the physical toughness of it, the mental toughness of it is something that, that we stress on a daily basis. And then, you know, that together portion, you know, people talk about family, people talk about Ohana. It's that synergy that we have. Um, it's that willingness to die for the brother next to you. It's, it's that idea that, that playing with, uh, playing for somebody, right, is so much stronger than just playing with somebody. And when we get to the position where our players, right, are more worried about letting down their brother next to them than anything else, that's when great things occur. And so, you know, that at, at the forefront is what we need to be able to establish. And I think we have a core of players on this team that understand that, a core of guys in the unit that understand that, our coaching staff understands that. Um, and so that's what you should be able to see on Saturdays. And that's what I want to see reflected on Saturdays is how hard we play, how physically tough we play, right? And how much we are playing for each other. Do your job, right? Do your job, make your play, um, play for the guy next to you. You know, those are some of the things that we consistently stress. Um, in regards to scheme, um, we're going to be multiple in what we do. I'm going to take some of the best things that I believe we had from all of those coaches, like you spoke about, that, that I was able to coach under and with over the last 20 years. Um, and some of the ideas that I've kind of had in my pocket over the last 20 years. And we're going to build multiplicity and complexity within our defense while teaching in a simplistic way. And I think that's the, that's the secret of coaching. Um, in this day and age, the offensive schemes and the rules that are kind of in place in college football right now that are kind of offensive oriented, um, you can't sit there and run the same exact front and the same exact coverage all day. Um, that's that's not a recipe for success. It's definitely not a recipe for success at the University of Hawaii. And so we want to be able to build complexity in what we do. Um, but the secret to that is, is to make it simple for the players. And so um, that's kind of what we've worked on. We've spent probably a good three weeks at least of, of not installing anything to the players. We, we pulled the walls down, um, you know, knocked it all down, and we've built everything from the bottom up. Um, I'm talking about the way we name formations. To me, it's got to make sense to the players in order for them to understand it better. The way we call fronts, the way we call our, call our coverages, the way we organize our calls so that our guys can go in and out of structures and understanding the different rules that they're playing in by naming it and teaching it in a certain manner. I think that is where coaches, especially assistant coaches, that's where you show your worth, is the ability to take these complex ideas that we as coaches work on for 14 to 18 hours a day, and then be able to simplify your message and your teaching so that these guys who are here for only four hours a day doing football are able to understand those things and quote unquote, play fast. And so that's what we're trying to build right now. Yeah, that, I mean, that makes a ton of sense. And, and I think even from your, you know, bigger, philosophical approach to things. I, I think that's something that won't be lost on Hawaii fans, right? Sort of reflecting the fabric of Hawaii and, and how that translates to on the field. And so with spring ball around the corner, you mentioned some of the work I and mean, you guys are hard at work already in, in, in building the foundation as you point out, but, but how important does this spring become as it's a brand new staff, brand new install and all those things involved, but you know, with the, these 15 dates and, and the couple of months that, that are allotted to you guys, how important is that to, to, to make sure these things are are built. Are, you do have that foundation heading into the fall. Right, it's, it's essential that we build a foundation here in the spring. Um, and like I spoke about, the first thing that we need to build is making sure I, our guys understand how we play the game, right? It, it's that effort piece, it's that pursuit, it's about attacking the football. Those things right there are gonna be, you know, essential for us learn, teaching them right now what our expectation is in regards to the way that they're playing in regards to their effort and their toughness. Um, those things gotta be show up on a daily basis. And you're gonna, if you come to our practice, um, I promise you that those are the things you're gonna be heard. Those are the things gonna be heard from our coach's mouth most than, um, more than anything. Um, and then being able to, to build a foundation schematically, um, I, I, I believe in teaching in silos. And so when you're teaching in a specific silo and, and, and all of these calls represent these rules and teaching in silos, 
And so we want to make sure we touch on each silo throughout spring. And that way they understand the structure of what we're doing, whether you know it's whether it's eight men spacing or nine men spacing, whether we're playing spill rules or we're playing box rules, um, our alignment rules kind of fall into different silos. Um, I want to touch on all the silos that I want to be able to use in fall, but I probably won't have a ton of calls in each silo. And just kind of building the foundation so that they can understand those things. That way, when summer and fall comes, nothing is foreign. We may change up a blitz pattern, but it still falls in the same rule concept. We may change up some some of the ways we we um, we align to a front, um, but those those same um, you know silo rules of, um, are in play. And so that's kind of what we're trying to build right now, and that's kind of the emphasis going into spring. So you're not going to see a ton of calls in spring. Um, we're going to allow these guys to play through things, see different scenarios, see different run fits, see different pass pass. Um, you know, components coming at us. And then from there, take all of that film and then be able to refine it in the summer with them. And that way we're walking into fall camp, ready to roll um, and excited about what we're doing. Coach, you got me ready to run through a brick wall right now, man. Uh, and uh, for those listening, uh, Coach Yoro has always been this way, uh, able to inspire guys to uh, to get the most out of them. I remember that one play, Pumba Williams uh, ran down that guy um, when we were playing Arizona uh, at the one yard line, that was just unbelievable. And I think that epitomizes some of that effort in that playing uh, together that you were kind of describing. Um, but, uh, you know, coach, in, in terms of scheme and, and who we are going to be as a defense, I think some of that probably has to do with the, uh, the certain pieces that we're even going to be able to put together on the defensive front, which the majority of the transfer portal, you know, in the, the last, you know, a couple of months has come from the defensive side of the football. So, you know, th is there anything that you might say towards that? Um, you're absolutely correct in that. And, um, and that's the reason why we put together the defensive staff that we did. Um, mm. If you look at those hires and I'll kind of touch on them right now. Um, you know, I brought in, I brought in Josh Brown, who's a safeties coach at UTEP. Um, he was the coordinator at Cal Poly. Um, when I was a safeties coach there. And so we've worked together um, there. So I brought him in. He's got coordinator experience. Um, he he comes from a different quote unquote family of defense um, and, and has some, some ideas and tools that we'll be able to use when we're putting together our defense. Um, I brought in, you know, Etienne, who's a defensive coordinator at Eastern Washington. Um, I worked with him at Cal Poly as well. And so um, he's got, you know, he's from another set of family of defense um, of kind of what we're doing. And I did that specific, uh, specifically for, for kind of what you're talking about. Um, what we do defensively, we are going to have to be flexible and creative according to whoever that personnel is that we end up having in June. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not into, you know, trying to stick a round peg, uh, square peg in a round hole. And that's something that's to me, a recipe for disaster, especially in a year like this, where so much of our roster is going to be showing up here in, in June. And so these guys, I have a fundamental idea and vision of what I want to do schematically. I have brought in guys that also have different ideas that have different ways of so, uh, you know problem solving. And so when we get to those points and, and we sit there and, and something that I want to do schematically doesn't fit our personnel, I know I can lean on guys who are experts in other ways of doing things. And so, so we may use that. And that's something that we may kind of, you know, you use through spring. Um, but I think I brought in a bunch of guys with a diversity of talents, um, diversity of, of, of backgrounds and experiences in order to help me build this thing. Um, I don't have all the answers um, and I know I don't. And so I'm bringing guys in who, who have other answers and that their answers might be better than mine. And so that's kind of what we've done. And then we're going to be creative with it. Um, that's the beauty of building a defense is, is being able to build it around the personnel. Um, and then we'll start to recruit to the specific defensive scheme that we want in the future. You mentioned some of the guys on the coaching staff, and there, there's a lot of familiarity, a lot of past relationships, a lot of past working relationships, I think, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball, but but especially, you know, you and and the head coach, right, Timmy Chang, a couple of local boys, a couple of St. Louis guys, a couple of guys who grew up in Middle Alani. Like, how ha have have you and, and Coach Chang sort of talked about it? I, I'm sure as, you know, you, you guys went through and he went through the hiring process and he, he retains you and whatnot. But, I mean, I think for, for, for a lot of local fans, for a lot of local 
uh, you know, young guys coming up and, and seeing that, like, uh, I guess, how cool is that? You get, you get these two crusaders, you get these guys from central Oahu and, and they're leading the state's program. I, I just think that's, you know, that's pretty darn cool. It, it is such a blessing. Um, such, such, such a blessing. I mean, I'm very humbled by this opportunity and, and excited about it. You know, I was talking to my wife the other day. Um, Timmy had his press conference when he first got into town. All right. And I saw him standing there. Um, and I could tell that um, I'm getting emotional a little bit thinking about this. And I haven't told a lot of people about this, but I watched TC up there and I saw him getting emotional. And I don't know if you guys remember, he kind of touched his heart and he was looking and, and um, I knew he was about to cry. I mean, that I just knew, you know, you, you're looking at, at him and, and you can, you understand the emotions that are going through. But what made that so special for me was, was that our journey was so similar um, that, that I can relate to all those emotions that he is going through in that position. I could totally just put myself in his shoes in that situation. It's the same way I felt when I was named defensive coordinator. It's, it was the same way I felt when I, when Rolo gave me the opportunity to come home. Um, just how much it meant to us to be able to come back yeah. and do this in the community that we love, in the state that we're so proud of, and in front of our loved ones, right? And so to me, it makes it that much more special and, and it makes it that much, that much more important for us to succeed. Um, this is a place I want to live for the rest of my life when it's all said. Oh, and, and so this is someplace that if I fail, if I'm a miserable failure, I probably don't, I'm probably not going to be able to do that. And so it's just, it means that much more for us because of the people that we're doing it for. Um, it's not just about us. And if it fails, we jump ship, you know, fly over the mainland and never worry about this place again. That's, that's not the way it is. And so it is special for us. Um, it is such a blessing. Um, it's emotional when we think about those things, but also there's a responsibility and a burden that comes with it. And, and it's not an easy job. I mean, people look at this thing and say, wow, two local boys that are able to kind of help run this program. Um, but when you are this embedded into the state and in the community, you also hear all of the noise. Um, and the noise is not easy to deal with sometimes. And, and we as coaches can sit there and say that we're not concerned about what, what people think about us. Um, we definitely can't allow it um, to affect our decision making. Um, but to say that we're not affected by it, um, that's crazy. We're humans, um, and we're in a place that we that we love. Um, you know, when I was elsewhere, you know, when I was at Cal Poly, um, I probably didn't care about what the public thought about me. I just kind of did my job and went about it because those weren't people that I cared about um, that were making those comments or were making those judgments. And so, here it's different. Um, you know, you hear it. You hear it from whether it's you know your buddy or an acquaintance or you know your your dad's classmate or whoever it may be and so you're closer to the noise and that makes those things a lot tougher um but it's a part of the job and i wouldn't trade it for the world i get to do what i love in front of the people that i love and there's not many people that can say that in this business coach your uh um your, your heart and, and care for not only the program but the state is is so evident and it's felt um you know we've talked about it on this podcast a few times that for the future of this program to be a winning one and a successful one. In some ways, we have to start breaking this mold of a new coach every three to four years and trying to, you know, rebuild from the ground up. Um, it's really encouraging, you know, hearing guys like you and then, you know, seeing the emotion from Coach Chang as well, that this potentially could be the dream job for you guys, could be the, um, the end all be all. Again, anything can happen, but could you speak to that at all about, you know, you know, th this being a, a six to eight year stint, hopefully and prayerfully with this coaching staff with the University of Hawaii? Right. Um, you know, anytime you, you have guys on staff that are connected here, and I'm not saying that have to be born and raised here. I'm just talking about guys who are connected to this place. Yeah. Um, you, you have a better opportunity of keeping guys around, um, you know, obviously, you know, the University of Hawaii, you know, football program, you know, we have some obstacles and we have some things that that some of the other programs across the country don't need to deal with. And so, um, you know, having guys that that are connected here, that that look at this place as something more than just um, a stop along the journey, 
um, I think is important as you're trying to, you know, create continuity in a program, like you said. And so, you know, the guys that are in this room, I mean, you just think about, you know, you know, Chris Brown and, and, and Nate Ilawa, and, and I'm going to miss some guys, but the, the guys that we hired, um, you know, even Etienne, guys who are connected to this place that have roots here, um, I, I think those are the guys that that are going to be going to allow you to create continuity, um, you know, in a place like this. And so that's what we hope to be able to accomplish. Um, this, you know, college coaching, the the industry and and the the business of it, you know, does not lend to a lot of continuity anywhere. Um, um, but but you're right, you know, for us to be able to continue and, and not have the the quote unquote, you know, the the peaks and valleys that we've kind of had traditionally um, throughout this program. You know, we're going to have to build continuity and whether it's, you know, whether it is, you know, Coach Chang getting an opportunity down the road someplace else that he believes is best for his family and he goes and and then you kind of fill it with somebody who who's been here and, and, and continue some of those things that are going. I mean, you want to be able to hopefully get to that point, because um, I believe that the best programs in the country, that's that's the model, right? It's somebody building something if they choose to move on. Then there's somebody that's, you know, you know, on staff that's ready to kind of, you know, take the baton and, and keep running with it. And it continues to move in that direction um, in order so that the, the core principles of the program and the way that it operates remains the same. Hmm. No, that's that's great stuff, I think, Coach. And and we really appreciate you, you hanging out with us. Uh, we kept you a little long here, but I, I just got one last question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, how much of a knucklehead was Hunter a, as a player or, or well, what kind of player was Hunter to, to, to coach back in you his know, day? I, I can't say a ton um, because he was on the other side of the right, ball. Right. Um, but he was definitely a pleasure to be around um, and he was a pleasure to have on the field. I, you know, the thing I remember most about Hunter, it's the same kind of Hunter that I saw, you know, eating brunch that one day when I saw him in, um, what was that, Cafe Kyla or whatever Cafe that Cafe Kyla, was. baby. Right, Cafe Kyla. Um, <laughs> It was it was that same guy that 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 infectious smile, um, a guy that that all the the teammates loved being around, um, that that had that that timely that timely joke that could get everybody laughing in the midst of something, um, and and just kind of it, it was the culture of, of what it was back then, right? Uh, those guys enjoying being around each other, putting in the work, but enjoying being around each other, um, and I think he you know he was a, a great. Um, piece of that of, of of the success that we had under Coach Rolo's tenure, and it was him and, and the rest of the guys like him that were like minded and that were out there doing this for their brothers. That we're going to compete when it was time to compete, um, but we're going to be able to have fun and, and laugh at, at times in in those situations as well. And so, um, yeah, that that's kind of who I remember him being. Um, the same guy that I see around the offices and the same guy I see at Cafe Kyla. The same deal. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah. Just run into Hunter Thanks, at brunch. Coach. You'll get the full experience. Uh, hey coach, we, we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. We, we know you carved out a, a bit of your morning to, to join us on the pod. And uh, I think the excitement is real. Uh, but uh, I think you as, as much as anybody on the staff, you guys are realists, you guys know the, 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 the magnitude of the task at hand. So we wish you the best uh, and we will uh, be checking in with you throughout the off season. And, and uh, once we head into the fall, best of luck coach. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. I really Much love, appreciate Coach. It. Thanks, Hello. man. This is Hawaii Football Now from ESPN Honolulu. All right, big thanks to Coach Yoro. Uh, you can hear the passion in our conversation. You, I, I love how, I think, well-planned he is in terms of his approach to the job, his approach to the defense, his approach to recruiting, building community, building relationships within the greater Hawaii community. Like, I, I just think he is, he is uh, approaching things in a very, very healthy way. Uh, and, and you hear the emotion at the end, right. And in, in talking about his connection and, and a lot of the staff's connection to the islands. And uh, you know, as he put it, he's like, Hey man, we can't, can't really fail. Right. He wants, he wants to live here. And uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. And uh, I can't blame him. And, and again, I think he is very aware and very pragmatic about the, the challenge that is the job, uh, but also embracing the, the opportunity that the job affords, you know, allowing him to coach at home, basically. Uh, and, and I was with you, man. I, I was pretty fired up after that, Hunter. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine someone else being a better fit for our defensive coordinator uh, role right now. Obviously, maybe someone, you know, has, uh, you know, a different background, a different approach to things. But in, in, from my perspective, that's everything you want to see from a defensive coordinator. Um, big on uh, unity, big on um, toughness. I mean, it, it is the brand of, of Hawaii football that I want to see as an alumni and uh, that there's kind of a no nonsense with coach Yoro too. Um, like you're, it, he's going to put the work in. So he expects you to put the work in as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this year with, with all this uncertainty that's gone down the last couple months. This was a little bit of kind of a breath of fresh air of wow, okay, if we can put that product on the field right now, I know we could get um, chain complex rocking again um, because that's the kind of football I want to watch. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, for this group to to try and put together a a winning product on the field, no doubt about it. And so as we look at things, uh, you know, big thanks to Coach Yoro for being our, our first ever guest here on Hawaii football now. All right, uh, quick overtime before we get everybody out of here. I just wanted to mention uh, Jojo Ward, who got uh, drafted in the USFL draft by the Houston Gamblers. Of course, that was the franchise that June Jones was the quarterback coach back in 1984 uh, and and threw it all over the place in the glory days of the USFL. Uh, And so shout out to Jojo for being picked up. I believe he was the only University of Hawaii product to be picked up in the USFL draft. Great opportunity. Um, It is a league that, you know, is trying to find the niche of spring professional football. Uh, And we'll see how he does as well. And also shout out to my guy, Brian Scott, uh, former quarterback from Occidental College, my alma mater. Uh, We don't even play football anymore at Occidental, uh, which is a sore spot with me. But I bring him up in part selfishly because, you know, go Tigers. Uh, he was drafted third overall. It was all quarterbacks in the first round. They sort of did round by round, position by position. But he was drafted third overall, which is pretty darn good. One spot behind Pearl City graduate Jordan Ta'amu, uh, who found his way through Ole Miss, right, and had a lot of success in the rebooted XFL for St. Louis, was on the roster in Kansas City with the Chiefs, the practice squad for a time. So a lot of Hawaii connections there. And I bring up Brian Scott because his Hawaii connection is his offensive coordinator at Occidental, one Brian Smith, former University of Hawaii, co-offensive coordinator and offensive lineman. So a lot of ties there, but uh, pretty cool opportunities for these guys. And, and we wish the best to JoJo in particular. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm super stoked for JoJo. Um, along with Cedric Bird uh, and a little bit with John Ursua too, that was kind of that, that first year of us fully transitioning from that Chow Norm, uh, Norm Chow um, pro style into the Nick Rolovich run and shoot once again and Jojo absolutely lit it up obviously with uh, with Cole McDonald at the helm and uh, excited to see what he does he's a he's a shifty and quick um, kind of slot receiver and uh, I wish the best for him I hope he does well yeah it'll be a lot of fun uh, shout outs to our guys Kavika on Facebook Uh, Our guy, Al from VA on YouTube, who's always dropping us comments. We always appreciate it. Uh, Kind of short on time with the Euro interview. So we will get to some of those next week uh, and in the coming weeks as well. Again, a big mahalo to Coach Euro. Shout out to our guy, Jaron, on the controls as well. Hunter, always a pleasure, man. This has been a lot of fun. And uh, we're hoping to get more guests on the show, uh, especially here in the offseason, getting to know some of the new staff, some of the new players as well. That is one of our objectives as we move throughout the spring uh and i'm sure uh you know spring ball right around the corner going to give us a lot to talk about as well again this has been hawaii football now presented by xanthison you can hit me up on twitter at jordan Haley. you can hit up hunter at all around ath you can drop us a line youtube facebook instagram twitter on all of the uh, the espn honolulu accounts as well as this episode will be posted uh you know come thursday which is tomorrow as we record this on wednesday morning big mahalo as well to our sponsors, Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA FCU. We'll see you next week, everybody. Hello. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Now with Jordan Helley and Hunter Hughes, all from ESPN Honolulu.